our virtual thesis, we made it together. And the title of the presentation and of our virtual thesis is Effects of Cover and Light on the Rice Sphere with Special Interest in Mycorrhiza and the Growth of the Host Tree PCR Avias. Our supervisors were Hans Göransen and Douglas Scott Paul from the Institute of Forest Ecology of our University in Bochum, Vienna. <laughs> So the race starts. I'm going to start with the introduction about mycorrhiza um, in spruce plants. Mycorrhiza are really great because they build symbiosis with trees and the trees get nutrients and water from the mycorrhiza and the mycorrhiza gets um, carbon. So um, mycorrhiza can decrease the heavy metal concentration in soils too. The role of heavy metals in forest soils, they are toxic for plants, mycorrhiza and microorganisms. Sources of heavy metals can be naturally or anthropogenetic. Uh, for our thesis, um, copper and lead are important. Copper is a micronutrient and phytotoxic. Yeah. And lead is phytotoxic. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, soil respiration is important for the sea cycle. 70% of the respiration takes place below ground. And you can differ between autotrophic and heterotrophic respiration. Mycorrhiza have an impact on the respiration. And therefore, mycorrhiza can be. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's my turn. So the experimental setup. Um, yeah, here you can see on the picture. It's a two-year-old spruce seedling in a big box, number two. In between number three, there's a mesh, 50 micrometers. So the mycorrhiza can go into the polluted box, number four. Number five is also a polluted box, so we can differ between <laughs> heterotrophic and the total respiration. You can see that. Heavy metal oh treatments God. with spruce <laughs> and without spruce. So we had uh, six of each, and we had different concentrations of 300 and 3,000 milligram per kilogram humus of copper and lead. Great. Yes, the measurements um, <laughs> method. So we used the PP system, CO2 and H2O gas analyzer um, to measure the heterotrophic and total respiration. So in the two boxes, the two little boxes you saw before. Um, that's how we put it on and measured it. Yeah, that's our little spruces. <laughs> Great. So um, we measured the biomass, the heat and the number of twigs, the above ground and below ground biomass. Uh, the visual appearance of mycelial strands under the microscope and also the copper and lead content in soils and in roots. So yeah, extractable in that part. Coming very shortly to our very interesting results, here you can see the height and the total um, biomass of our um, experiment. As you can see, the lead 3300 um, performed the best, which was really crazy. Um, so, yeah, there is a significant difference between the polluted and unpolluted samples. Here you can see the microalgae appearance of our experiment. There we found in every sample of mycorrhiza. But the most mycorrhiza we found in the just water treated ones, unpolluted ones. Here you can see the heavy metal concentration in soil, the copper availability and lead availability in soil. As you can see, the copper and lead 3000 was 10 times bigger than the copper and lead 300 ones. So significant difference. <laughs> and here, which is really great, the soil respiration measurement. You can see the difference between the heterotrophic and total respiration, and we were really lucky because we could show that there is microalgae res respiration because there is a significant difference between the total and the heterotrophic respiration, but just in the control group, so just in the unpolluted ones. Mm -hmm. So. Exciting. Yeah, exciting results. <laughs> yeah, and it's the same in the copper and the lead ones. Significant difference. <laughs> okay, so to the absorption of heavy metals um, in soil, um, reference values show that the concentrations of uh, lead and copper are in range of the data measured in the field of polluted soil. So our uh, mimicked soil in this experiment was in pollution range. That was, was yeah, what we wanted uh, to achieve. Um, yeah, The respiration of the control box is nearly doubled, as you could see before. So that's an um, evidence of appearance of mycorrhiza in the control boxes. 
Um, yeah, there was no significant difference, you told us before, between the heavy metal treatments, which, which of course is because of the interactions of abiotic and biotic factors, so we didn't go into that deeper into that. So, yeah. um, it's either you invest into your, um, into your own biomass or into the symbiosis with mycorrhiza. And our hypothesis is then that the polluted seedlings grew better because they used the carbon um, for themselves and not gi didn't give it uh, to the mycorrhiza. Yeah, um, we could uh, possibly change the setups by uh, using in-growth sandbags together with the root tip colonization so we get um, yeah, more details about uh, the mycorrhiza itself. Um, yeah, also it's important to measure the heavy metal contents in soil before and afterwards. Okay, coming to the conclusion and summing it up once again. Heavy metals inhibited mycorrhizal ingrowth and the seedlings treated with heavy metal concentrations grew better. Why? Well, our hypothesis is that we had sufficient nutrients, which means um, the synthesis, synthesis of um, mycorrhiza and trees uh, could cause a negative effect. And mycorrhiza in control boxes took the carbon away from the tree, so it grew less. This is our hypothesis. So, yeah, I think this is it. So thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>